All right, so honey extracts, um, the first, we're gonna do the honey paste first and then the pill second. Uh, what I did is I sent you all, I believe it was one ounce of this heart exhilarant powder formula. It's amazing, isn't it? Smells so good, you wanna eat it? Did I send it to you in a jar? I sent you in a baggie, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, this is rose petals, um, oxalum sanctum, which is holy basil, elataria is cardamom, and then cinnamon is in there. And this is just a pure exhilarant formula. And remind me again, what's the definition of an exhilarant? Uplifting. Delight the senses, right? Yes, delighting the senses is uplifting. So 100% yes, you are right. But the idea is that we, you know you could think of anything as an exhilarant as long as you feel like your senses are engaged and delighted. This was the traditional remedies for the heart, for the spiritual heart, remedies for depression and mood disorders. Um, this is an important category, and I think you could add an exhilarant to pretty much every single formula you ever make, and you're only going to make it better. So. So what I'm gonna do for the demo, since I sent you one ounce of this, it's already pre-mixed powder formula, what I do is I actually get all these herbs, well, cinnamon, I don't powder myself because it's really hard, the powder cinnamon chips, so I buy that already powdered. Um, and then um, I powder the cardamom myself, I buy whole rose, it says rose petals on the label, it's actually rose buds that I use. You get more aromatics that are retained in a bud versus a flower that has been opened and is dissipating its aromatics. So I get whole buds and grind them myself. You get a much better fragrance with that. And the same with the basil, whole, uh, of Tulsi, I uh, grind that myself. So the, just so you know, I, I pre premix this formula for you, but certainly encourage you to make your own. Um, and since I sent you all one ounce, what I'm doing is I'm breaking it into two equal parts so I can do a half of an ounce I'll do as the honey paste and a half an ounce I'll do as the honey pills. So we can give you two methods of um, delivering your herbs and honey. The pills are kind of a pain in the butt, I'll just be honest. I think everyone should know how to do them. They're a wonderful way to treat yourself for like a special occasions or for children. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, I really do think just for simplicity and fast-paced medicine, pharmacy practice, the paste is a really cool way to go. Um, so, so I just divided it into two. I sent you all like 30 grams roughly. So I just broke it into two 15 gram portions. Does yours look like this, question mark? Does mine look like what? Never mind. I was trying to uh, double check with Debbie. I have a jar that's not labeled and I think that's what it is. Oh, okay. I'm, and it smells like cardamom and cinnamon, it probably is. <laughs> okay. It smells like yellow dock. Oh. It's okay. I've got uh, I've got other stuff here, so we'll make it work. Okay. If I if I somehow missed sending it to you, let me know, and I will send it to you. No, I have the empty bag. I just think I did something with it. Oh, <laughs> it was it's so okay. good. It just disappeared. <laughs> well, I think you and I were messing with some stuff earlier, so it's okay. okay. I'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, oh, before I get started on the honey pills, I just since we were talking about saffron earlier. I'm sharing with you guys my saffron. This is saffron water. If you look at that color, is that not mad amazing? Here, let me come over and show it to you. How many, threads, how many threads was that? A pinch. I don't know. I just took a, a like a nice fingerful, threw it in there, and this is in 250 mils of water. Um, and this is going to go into that Tears of Joy formula that we're making now for our next term. Yeah. But you can see the little threads floating in there. I mean, they get all plump and delicious, and then I eat those threads. Like when I strain it out, I'll just sit there and nibble on the soaked threads. Yum. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's just a gorgeous color. It's like color therapy. I just wanted you to see it because you don't see that color once it's all mixed in the formula. I'll set this aside for now. Okay. So honey. Um, I'm gonna do the honey piece first. So I've divided my pile into two equal parts. If you have a scale, that really helps. If not, just eyeball it. If you wanna do two, if not, you can convert it all into one form that you prefer to make. So for the honey paste, um, oh yeah, this is the, the method. You know, a lot of people, when I first started learning about electuaries, electuaries are that sort of fancy word for a honey extract. 
or a honey paste. You just put herbs in. I was always just taught, just put your herb in honey. There is something different when you heat the honey and that uh, the warm honey in particular is part of that hydroscopic um, chemi phytochemical process where it actually sucks the protoplasma out of the plant material and makes your herb stronger. You don't get that, um, that property where it sucks the moisture out of the plant material if it's just cold honey. You can do it a little bit, but not so much. That's something about the heating is important. So I know people have this issue with hot honey, but um, we're not getting it to a boiling point. Um, let me start you off with the math for this. Math and then make. Always think it through first when you're making a medicine. For a uh, hot honey paste, or we could call it a, an electuary sort of, but hot, electuary doesn't necessarily mean hot or cold. It just means herbs and honey. And so when I say honey paste, I'm really specifically talking about this uh, particular extraction method, which does originate from Pakistan. I'm sure it was used in other parts of the world, but this is the tradition we've been carrying. We dispense a lot of our herbal formulas in the clinic as honey pastes. It's a primary method of distributing herbs for us. Um, so the ratio for a hot honey paste is one to three, right? You all remember basic medicine making like um, tincture making, you know, one to five, right? Or oil extractions, one to eight, or you can play with those ratios depending on the herb and what you're doing with it. Um, but with honey, uh, we are doing a one to three. That means one part honey by weight to three parts honey by volume. So it's a weight to volume, just like with all your other medicine making. We're taking one ounce, you have one ounce of the herb, which I've divided in half, so I'll do the math for that. One ounce of herb, that means you need, that's one ounce of herb by weight. That means you need three ounces of honey by volume. Right? So that's the proportion that blends really well for almost any formula. And I've played with a lot of different herbs and honey. Um, each herb will act a little differently in honey uh, as far as how much it sucks up, but that one to three works pretty dang perfect for almost any formula. Um, so uh, yeah, so one part, so it's um, by grams to milliliters, that would be the other weight to volume conversion. If you have 30 grams of herb, you're going to do, um, what is it? Uh, times three, uh, thir 30, 30, 30, 90 milliliters of honey. Um, but I'm gonna demo with my half ounce. So um, I did the math for mine. So a one to three, I'm starting with 15 grams, roughly, I don't know, it's like 14.5 grams, I'll just call it 14. Um, that's a half ounce, of, half ounce of powdered herb. So times three, my 14 grams of herb becomes 42 milliliters of honey. So the first thing I do is measure my honey. I know how much herb I'm using, and then I measure my honey. So I am gonna pour, I have one of these little, these are very super helpful in the pharmacy. They're little measuring glasses that have like milliliters, teaspoons, tablespoons, and fluid ounces all on one, and they're super cheap. Um, I certainly have fancy like graduated cylinders and beakers, but I find I reach for this thing the most because it's so versatile. Um, and so I'm gonna put in here, my 42 mils is one and a half ounces of honey. Kind of pour it in there, eyeball it. I think that's ooh, pretty spot on. So I got my honey measured, and the next thing I'm going to do is warm my stove top. So I don't know if you can see, but I have a, a little pan, a hot plate here, and I'm going to turn my pan on to a low heat. Um, I don't want it to start boiling the honey. The purpose is to melt the honey. You know, when you get honey kind of warm without boiling, it turns into this watery consistency. It gets very thin and very runny. So it doesn't matter how sticky or crystallized your honey is to begin with, it'll get all melty in this process. So I'm turning my element on low heat. I got myself on these fancy little tiny spatulas. They're really, really useful for getting things like honey out of jars. And I'm just going to scoop, um, Scoop my honey into my pan. I have a um, a griddle on my gas stove in the uh -huh. center. Uh huh. And I measure out my honey as close as I can get to eyeball it, you know, in my container, a glass container. Uh huh. And then I let it sit on top of very, very low heat on top of that until it melts down. And that way I don't end up. It just melts down. I don't have to. Oh, perfect. So it kind of stays at an even low temperature. 
Mm -hmm. Nice. That's perfect. That's really nice. Fancy. Okay, so I, might, I have an electric element, so it takes a minute to get up to temp. It's what I can use here at the school. And I've got my honey in here and I don't know, it doesn't take long. Keep an eye on it and you just wanna watch it. You wanna wait until it gets the consistency of water. I kinda just keep stirring it and you'll see as it warms, it'll get start to get more and more runny and you're just putting a tiny bit of honey in there. So if you are using your whole ounce of herb, your 30 grams to make this honey paste, you do want three ounces of honey by volume. I'm doing a half that so I can demo the other method. So three, if you're doing the whole batch as a honey paste, it's what, three fluid ounces or 90 mils. Mine just got up to temp really fast, but you can see the consistency. I don't know if you can see that. It's like watery, it's drippy. It's no longer thick. You know, when you put a, a spoon in the honey jar and it like comes off like in long drips. This doesn't have those long drips. Do you see, it's just like, it's not like bloop with honey, it's runny, like water. That's all, yeah, I literally just heated it to get to that temp consistency and I've turned my flame off now. And it didn't take long with such a small amount of honey. If you're doing bigger batches, it might take a little longer. But now that it's warm and runny, that's all you're looking for. Now you stir your uh, powder formula, uh, your pre-mixed powder formula right into the hot honey in the pan. Don't, as long as it's liquidy, you can turn the heat off. In fact, it's better not to let it simmer or boil too much. And you just stir. And at this point, you're just gonna keep stirring and keep stirring right there in the pan until all that honey is uh, taken up the powder. It's ideal to mix it while it's hot and liquidy and get those chunks out as much as you can because you're gonna pour it from this directly into a jar. Um, I actually have a cute little two ounce jar. I think I'll put it in. Um, any kind of jar will do. I have this that I keep in the pharmacy, which are really nice. I have like two and four ounce amber jars and this is such a small batch. I normally dispense our honey paste for our clients in the clinic in a four ounce jar. Um, and it's perfect. The four ounce glass jar is so perfect for dispensing exactly this. One ounce herb in three ounces of honey fits a four ounce jar perfectly. <laughs> uh, and so it really is a nice way to dispense them. And we just put a little handwritten label on it with whatever the formula is. We'll do sleepy formulas like this, digestive formulas like this, allergy formulas like this. Um, uh, basically any herb you would put in a tea, you could put into a honey paste. Okay, um, I am now well mixed. And while it's well mixed and still hot, you wanna get it out of the pot and into a storage container. And in this case, I'm using a small two ounce jar for my little sample demo. And, and then I always make sure to let it cool before I put the lid on. That is another trick if you want it to have a nice finished sort of professional sealed top to it. Um, if you put the lid on it while it's still wet, sometimes you pick up the jar and you move it around and then you get like honey slashed against the lid and it looks all goopy when you open it up later. I really want my products to have that nice professional finished look when somebody opens it. So I make sure that it's cooled in the jar. Heather? Yes. Heather, is it supposed to be kind of goopy? Yes, it's supposed to be goopy while it's hot. Once it cools down, it will become thick, like a paste consistency. But yes, that is, um, I don't know if you can all see this now, but here's a sample for here. It's still hot and liquidy. Um, here it is, still hot and liquidy. I mean, it's kind of rolling around in there. The glass is hot because there's hot honey in there, but I am able to touch it. Um, so yes, what's happened is it now is hot, runny honey. Let it cool with the lid off. And this will help the uh, honey to harden to a nice, almost like a candy finish across the top. And if you get any on your fingers, that is your delight, your moment, lick it up. In fact, if you didn't spill any on your fingers, go ahead and stick your finger in it. You'll be in for a treat. Okay. Mm. 
Oh my God, that's so good. I swear, this is so amazing, it's so delicious. I, I don't know why I tell people that they should all know how to roll honey pills. I think this is a superior medicine, but honey pills are kind of nice and I'll, I'll get into the reasons why in just a minute. But here's my, my little hot honey, my little lid, and I'm just gonna let it sit there on the counter until it cools. Yeah. And then the dosing with the honey pastes. Um, we usually dose, it depends on the formula and the person, but I usually start with something around a half a teaspoon three times a day. That's a good starting point. Um, I did some math previously just to test out like how much powder is actually in a half a teaspoon. And I did the math, uh, what was it? They, I determined there was two, average, it depends on the herb, because some herbs weigh more than others. Um, but on average, there's about two grams of powder in every teaspoon of your honey paste. So you can think of your know, powder doses, you know, two grams of powder is a normal standard dose. When you put it into a honey, you're actually making that herb stronger because it's now breaking apart those molecular constituent structures in the plant material. So I always do a little less. I do like one gram is what's in a half a teaspoon, roughly. Um, and you can do that three times a day. Um, I was doing, recently made an allergy formula this way in a honey paste and um, I did up it for one person to have them do one gram, uh, one teaspoon three times a day instead of a half a teaspoon. Um, and it was just like that extra bit, that higher dose helped to actually keep the mucous membranes from plugging up in their sinuses. Um, so you'll play with the dose. I often tell people to experiment with it. I'll say, start with a half a teaspoon three times a day. If you feel like you need more, you can bump it to a whole teaspoon. Um, I recently actually had, I'll share a story with you, a uh, client who was having severe GI distress, like chronic diarrhea to the point where she couldn't leave the house. Um, and the, her doctor had prescribed her prednisone, a steroid drug, to try and shock her system into not having diarrhea anymore. And they were so adamant that she needed to stay on the steroid until her diarrhea was resolved. Of course, it wasn't helping. It was making it worse. Um, so I played a dirty trick with her <laughs> and I gave her a honey paste formula to astringe her diarrhea. And I said, well, we'll cure your diarrhea with the herb. That way they'll be forced to take you off the prednisone. <laughs> um, and it worked. I made her a nice big honey paste jar. I did it like a four ounce jar and I put in it uh, simple astringent herbs. I put in rose, heart medicine, but also GI astringent. Um, I put in yarrow for wound healing astringency of the gut. And I also put in some anise as a carminative antispasmodic and balancing agent. Uh, we would call it a corrigent for rose. I just put those three herbs into a honey paste and had her take a tablespoon a day. I'm sorry, a tablespoon, a teaspoon, three times a day. Her diarrhea was completely gone, bowels back to normal in like eight or nine days. And her doctors took her off her prednisone. So I don't know why I just what shared that the story. What well, was the first herb, Heather? It was rose, yarrow, and anise. Wow just really nice topical anti-inflammatories, wound healing for the gut lining and astringent to draw out that extra excess water in the bowels. Um, and the, car the anise was added because it's a corrigent for rose. There's rose and uh, is very cooling. And then the anise is a nice antispasmodic and it's warming and relaxing. So it's kind of balancing the astringent cold energetics of the rose. Anyway, um, you should, hopefully I'll have a finished honey paste by now. What do you think? Someone tell me you love it. So good. So good. I mean, now is the moment where you get to sit here and just lick the spoon because like that's the best part. <laughs> I seriously, who needs candy? This is it, sweet treat for life. Okay. Would you recommend? Would you recommend any honey, a particular honey, or it doesn't matter? Any honey will do. I prefer to buy my honey from a local beekeeper, someone in my bioregion that I trust. Some of the honeys on the market just buy like those big bins of cheap honey. Sometimes that stuff is honey from China. Oh. China is so polluted. I wouldn't want my honey from there. Uh, so I just recommend you support a local beekeeper. Um, yeah.
just good local honey. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna sit here and lick my spoon one more time and then I'll show you guys the honey pills. Mm. So good. I feel exhilarated. Okay, element off. Do you see how fast and easy that was? Now, it was a fast, easy practice because you already started with the powdered herbs. So you are, if you're formulating from scratch and you're having to powder the herbs, account for that, it's gonna add a lot more time to your, your process. I'll just leave that there while it cools. It's kind of in my Don't visual. Don't forget to label it. Don't forget to label it. That's actually, you know, that um, if you still have that little plastic bag with the printed label, those labels peel off the plastic very easily. You can just peel that off and slap it on a little jar. <laughs> um, I've done that before. Very helpful. So could you, uh, in grinding the herbs, could you measure them out before you grind them and then grind them all together? Yes. Um, that's what we typically do. I typically would have, yes, because you, if you're making a powder formula, right, you don't want to have to powder your four herbs individually and then combine them. And then, you, you know, um, so what we tend to do is I'll weigh out a little heavy because you're going to lose some, uh, weight just in the grinding process and the dust particles that fly, there will be a little bit of loss. So I always weigh a little over when I'm just measuring on the scale. Then I combine them. So I usually can powder them all at once, but it does depend on the herb. Something like, I don't know, like some herbs powder really easily and other herbs are harder to powder. So this is something you'll have Jamaica to experiment Jamaica dogwood with. is really hard to powder. Jamaica dogwood is, it. yeah, really hard to powder. Really so, hard. It comes out all thready and... Yeah. So what I what I do two things is um you can sift. So if you have a hard with an herb that's hard to powder, I will powder it separately in a larger volume. And then I sift it. You just get yourself like um one of these things. Dun -dun -dun, stainless steel mesh. And then you sift it, you can get m most of the threads out, those little fibers that are still in there. Not always a hundred percent come out, but you can get most of them out with sifting. Um and what I inevitably do, because I use powder so much in the clinic and the pharmacy here with our clients that I'll just show you. Here's um, every herb that's on the shelf in the bulk herb section. We actually keep a small jar next to it of the powder. So it's just like we always have a little bit of powder of almost, almost every herb. There's a few herbs I don't have powders of, but like this is chamomile, matricaria powder. And this is bayberry um, root, root powder. So sometimes what I'll do, because some herbs are harder to powder than others, I'll go ahead and just powder extra that, so I know I'll have some for my formula and I'll have a little left over and then I have little mini jars of powder. So if I want to make another powder formula later, I just grab the powder and I can mix it. It's, it's a, it's a nice little tip. So I, I can walk you through the, my pharmacy some more in a little bit where you can see all the little mini jars on top of the big jars. And that's because we have the powder stock there. You may have the same. I did the same thing. Uh-huh. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So this is cooling off. So now let me show you the um the honey pills. This is kind of a fun practice. And has anyone here rolled honey pills before? <laughs> Look at Kristen's face. <laughs> They're they are messy. I love to eat them, but I making them is a hot mess. Yeah, they are a hot mess. I'm not gonna argue well, with you on that. <laughs> And then last year I made a huge batch and I had them on the cutting board in the oven and my son was just starting to learn how to start preheat the oven and so the whole batch melted in the oven. We are not friends. <laughs> I was so mad after so all funny. that rolling. Oh, so, well, I hope, right. I hope today's experiment goes better for you. Um, it will. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So it works really well with molasses too. Ooh, I bet it works well with molasses. molasses pills for my next door neighbor because they can't eat honey. Amazing. And it worked. It worked really good. Amazing. That's so great. Did you, um, is she diabetic? Was that the reason or some other reason? No, um, they did the blood draw an investigation on allergies to food and tolerances and 
two of them came up for honey. Weird. Okay. I know. I've never heard that before. But they don't eat honey, so I... Okay. <laughs> okay. So for the honey pills, um, by the way, the, the molasses is more mineral rich, so it's a great thing to add as a nutritive for like um, some for blood deficiency formulas. If you want to do blood building or nutritive formulas, using the molasses is probably an upgrade. But for this, I'm literally just taking a bowl and a spoon and my powder formula. I'm dumping what's left of my powder. So I've, I've got my, what is it, half an ounce, about 15 grams roughly of powder in my bowl. And with the honey pills, you actually just mix enough honey to make it um, like a, a dough consistency. So you're going by consistency. I don't have like a ratio for you, but I can tell you use less honey than you think. It's easy. It's way too easy to overdo and put too much honey in there. And then it's a honey gloop and the gloops are never gonna roll into tight balls. So our goal is to roll it into little pills. And with that, you need a very dense structure. So I'm gonna just take, I'm gonna start with one spoonful. I can always add more if I need to, but the art is actually in the mixing to get the consistency. So there's no, no ratio, no math, but I am going to start with a small spoonful. So I don't know if you can see this, this is a regular teaspoon. And I am going to let the bulk of it drain off. So it's, I don't know, it's definitely a rounded teaspoon, but it's not a heavily rounded teaspoon, okay? Uh, and you'll be amazed. This does look like a lot of powder and not very much honey. I wanna start with as little honey as possible can, because that's the, the consistency gets gooey fast and people end up with little piles of, I don't know, like Play-Doh, like not Play-Doh, I don't know, something runnier than Play-Doh. Like slime. Slime. Yeah. So, so now I've just got a little bit of honey and my powder and I'm just gonna start mixing. And this is where you really are gonna get to practice working out your stirring muscles because you spend a lot of time just mixing, mixing, mixing to get that, um, it's like a firm pasty consistency that we're going for. Um, so if you noted already, this practice uh, does not require hot honey. In fact, the hot honey would make it a lot harder to roll the pills because it's soft and gooey. Uh, so there's a, there's a, the bonus here with, is that you have nice little dose size. Um, you can actually weigh them out when you're done rolling your pills. You can sometimes end with like perfect two gram dose, two gram per pill, right? Two gram pills. So it's a nice way to easily measure a dose for somebody. Um, and it's also very easy to take and travel with. Like you can travel on a plane with a little tin of honey pills, but you can't travel on a plane with a jar of honey paste. They'll take it from you. So there are real benefits to honey pills. The problem is, is that it's not that hot honey, which we know the hot honey is a superior method for breaking down chemical structures in plant material. So um, you're still getting the whole herb, it's not like, it's just basically, I consider it like the same as taking a powder, not a heavy extraction that's happening of constituents, but all the constituents are still present. Nothing's being removed. Um, so, but yeah, I'm just gonna basically keep mixing and keep mixing. It doesn't look like that my little bit of honey is gonna take all that powder, but trust me, keep mixing and keep mixing and it will. And sometimes it gets stuck up on the top of the spoon, so you gotta scoop it off and then smash it. And I kind of like this technique of taking the back of the spoon and smashing the honey into the powder. That really seems to help. And this is the part where you are gonna get sticky and messy, so you might want a little like damp cloth next to you so you can clean your fingers off as needed. But I think I'm about there. I have not added any more honey. One, like one slightly rounded spoonful of honey was all I needed for all that powder. And it's actually, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like coming out the consistency of like clay almost, like hard wet clay. Let's see if I can show you guys over here. Do you see this is the consistency I've got right now? 
and it's like definitely stuck to the spoon, right? It's kind of like it will fall off if I hang out long enough, <laughs> right? But that's the consistency. That's a consistency that's rollable. And you can see how if it was any like softer or liquidy or more honey uh, in, the, in its consistency that it would not roll. And our whole point is for rolling little pills. So that's pretty good. Okay. How are you guys doing on the rolling bit over there? Got it? We're rolling? Okay. So now um, I've pulled out my cutting board because uh, the next step, maybe I have to lower the screen so you can all see my cutting board a little better. Move this forward a little bit. There you go. So for this next bit, um, once I've got that sort of pasty consistency, it's like, you know, it'll all stick together, right? You want it to all stick together into a blob. Um, I am now going to roll into snakes. Now you can just start breaking it off and rolling little pills. But what I've learned, if you just start pinching pieces off and rolling pills is that some of your pills end up like marble shooters shooter marble size, some of them end up like BB size, some of them are pea size, and you had like, there's too much variability in sizes. And one of the things that I like to create when we're doing honey pills is consistency so that the pills can all be measured as, you know, roughly a dose will have the same amount of herb in each pill. So to con achieve consistency, one of the ways that I do that is roll a little snake first. So this is the part where you want you make sure you have clean hands because we're going to get in there and really touch our herbs. You're adding your love to it. And so I start kind of just like, I don't know if anyone here ever took ceramics and made coils. It's like coiling. You're going to roll. Um, see, it looks like I started this little cigar shaped thing, worm shaped thing. And I'm just going to keep rolling it on my flat surface on my cutting board to make a thin, I want it like, the diameter of a pencil is that, that's the thickness I'm going for. And it's okay if your, your little snake breaks into multiple sections, you can just keep working them until they get thin enough. Thin. And you can see how if I added any more honey to this, I would not be able to roll it so well. It would be a much harder thing to do. But I'm getting a nice, even, long coil. Here we go. And I'd say mine's kind of like a fat pencil right now. I could make it a little thinner. A little thinner. Um, there we go. All right, so I think that's pretty good there. I might have to loop mine around this way. There we go, and I'll cut it into two. And this is where I get my knife out. And I'm just going to cut it into two parts so I can roll them separately. There we go. Right. And now, um, before I start chopping and rolling, there's one more thing. I'm We're going to chop them. Well, I'll walk you through it first. What I'll do is I chop them into little squares. Because I have an even diameter for the whole thing, I can now just go half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch with my knife. It'll make a squared off sort of pillow shape. And then I'm going to roll it into a ball and throw it into another bowl that has some demulcent powder in it. And the demulcent coats each pill so that then they don't stick together or stick to the jar because that is one of the issues with pills is they're sticky. So um, I, you do need a, like a spoonful roughly of any kind of demulcent will do. I'm using Althea powder. Um, traditionally, people would use slippery elm powder for rolling pills. This is the traditional herb that's used. Other people will use licorice powder. Um, any demulcent powder will do. So I just put you know, a couple of spoonfuls in the bottom of the bowl so that when I'm cutting and rolling my pills, I drop them into the bowl and I wiggle it around and it coats the honey pills with the powder. So this is where I am now going to go down and start cutting up my little, um, yeah, just, I'll show you guys a, an example. I'm just gonna make a few slices and then I'll bring it over so you can see. There's a 
few slices. And what I've done here is I've coiled my snake and I've just started cutting it into little square, you know, like what half inch sections so that they're roughly now the same size. So when I pick up each one of these little segments, I'll be able to round out the corners with my hand and then coat them in the demulsion powder. So some people, so I just pick up one of those squares and literally just roll it into a little ball. I think that's the easiest and I like the little balls. Um, see, they end up like, I don't know, rabbit turd size. Um, I, some people like to roll a little pill shape. So I'll show you that. I think the balls are fine and they're easy, but some people like to, you know, the pill shape where it's sort of elongated, you can then roll it out. So it's like, I don't know, what is that? The shape of a Tic Tac <laughs> or like, you know, a supplement. You can just kind of flatten your ball and make it round and elongated if you like. Um, that's totally a personal preference. You're gonna chew these things anyway. You don't swallow them whole, so it doesn't matter if they're round or elongated. But yeah, so now I got my little ball and I'm just gonna drop it into my little powder and give it a wiggle. And look at that, I've got a perfect little honey paste, honey ball, honey pill. So now what I do is I go down the line and I just start rolling pills and dropping them in the powder and I leave them in the powder overnight before I put them in a jar. And the reason I leave them in the powder open like this overnight is because I do want them to slightly dry and harden. And you know how if you leave things that are honey based out, they actually start to get more tacky and some of the water will evaporate. There is water moisture in honey. Um, good honey, good quality honey is supposed to be like under 18% moisture, but there is still that 18% or less water content in there. So I'm just rolling and dropping them in there and I leave it out overnight. Um, one of the things I'm telling you, leave it in the powder in the bowl overnight so that it does harden. Because if you take them fresh out of their little powdery basin and put them in a jar and cover it, it actually seals moisture in there and you'll come back the next day and all your perfectly round pills will be little flattened pancakes and they'll be sticking to each other. So in order to get that like firm consistency, I do want to dry them. And some people will go a step further. I just leave it in a bowl out overnight, which I think works fine and I get good quality texture that way. But some people go a step further and put their pills in a dehydrator. Um, and you can do that if you just take you ro roll them out and coat them in your powder and then set them on a dehydrator tray rack. That makes, they're get so hard that they literally will clank together in the jar. Um, and it's the drying that does that. Um, this is a fun practice to do with kids. You can see how painstaking it is. But the nice thing about doing it for kids is that then they can dose themselves and you're not like, here's a jar of honey and a spoon, kid, have at it. And who knows, it might all be gone in the next 20 minutes. Whereas with the pills, you can dose like, here's your two, right? And they can pick the two for themselves, which is very nice. Um, and like I said, the one time where I really love having the pills is when I'm traveling. Cause I can put them in a little tin. I can use those like a little Altoid tin or even just like, um, you know, a tin that you would put salve in. Like here's a one ounce salve tin. I could put easily a dozen pills in there, stick it in my purse, and when you're traveling and you're on a plane, you got tummy ache or something's not right, you need a little remedy, instant medicine in your travel bag. It's very convenient, and they will steal your honey paste from you at the TSA um, check-in. So just- If you want a tip- Yeah. If you want a tip, you probably have to do by law is tell TSA it's, it's medication, Oh, right. And then they'll just scan it, and then they let you keep it. Really? But uh -huh. I still think, the, yeah, because they have to. It's, a, it's an accommodation. But I still think that the pills are easier to take with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's not fun to get screened, because then they swab your hands, and sometimes yeah. they cut you down. So just be prepared. Yeah. The less you have to interact with TSA, the better. <laughs> yeah. Just smile and walk by. Smile and walk by. <laughs> Yeah, um, 
Yeah, and the other thing about the honey pastes for travel is that there's the weight of the glass jar, so it's heavier, and then you gotta carry a spoon around with you, which I, I usually carry my own cutlery set with me everywhere I go anyway, so that part's not so big, but um, being, you know, less weight and less reason for screening is definitely a bonus. How's everybody's pills looking over there? You wanna show us what you got? Okay, here's mine. I'm just, now they're all coated. They look like little white pills. Yeah. So. Oh, cute, Debbie. They look adorable. <laughs> nice work over there. If you're having a hard time rolling them into little pills, oh, nice job, Kristen. They look really good. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, that is Kristen. Okay. <laughs> that licorice is really yellow. Yellow. It's they're super yellow from the this licorice fruit bat, which batch was pretty yellow. Nice. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so if you're not getting perfect little pills that look like rabbit turds, then it's probably because you added too much honey. And that's okay. I have made several batches with too much honey, and that's how I learned just the minimal amount of honey and and you'll be amazed at how much powder that can take up. So this accelerant formula is actually a rewrite uh, from the course material that you all studied on Herbs for the Spiritual Heart. Paul talked about amber. Do you, do you see the amber? It was in the article too. Um, amber powder, amber resin. Uh, we could talk about amber powder, but he actually, Paul, his original powder formula for the heart center powder formula was 50-50 amber resin and rose. And I'll tell you, I really got experimented with the amber. I thought, whoa, I like amber everything. I like amber jewelry. I like amber perfume. I could take some amber medicine. So I hunted down some good quality amber. You know where you buy amber for medicine? On the Chinese herb market. You, I, I get it from new herbs called, um, yeah, new herbs. <laughs> is the company I order from, or you can get it from Meiwei, I think. But it's called Hopu, H-O-P-U, Hopu, Chinese name for amber resin, which they're actually using, it's a pine tree. They're collecting the granulated resin from uh, the species Pinus sexifenur, which is the pine trees that grow all around the Baltic Sea where you find Baltic amber. <laughs> Uh, and they actually, it's not petrified. So like the amber jewelry is all petrified. So they actually, they get it while it's still um, off the tree, like, like pine resin. It's basically pine resin. That's what it is. I am suggesting you could go harvest your local pine resin and do much the same thing. The one problem with the powder formula and why I stopped sending it to students is when you make honey pills out of amber powder, you're chewing on crunchy resin and you have this grit feeling in your teeth. It's not pleasant for powders. So even though Paul originally was the one who was like, oh, put amber powder in your pills, I, I kind of learned against it because nobody likes the gritty teeth sensation. Uh, so what I have been doing is I've been taking that amber that I bought for making the honey, for the, making the powders and honey pills, and I started tincturing it. And it's a resin. It tinctures very well and, and straight high proof alcohol. Like I would tincture it just like I'm making a myrrh tincture. Um, don't dilute your alcohol with water. Um, or say if I'm making like a frankincense tincture, same kind of thing. Um, and that is an incredible heart opener. The amber resin is, it drops you into the sweetness, the centering of the heart. And it is used that way. It's used as a Shen medicine in Chinese herbalism. And the Shen is the sort of like the, uh, the sparkle that you can see when you look at someone in the eyes and you see their, their sparkle, that aliveness. We call it vitality, right? You can see that person looks alive, right? Uh, but they call it the Shen is the essence. Like how, how shiny is your essence, right? Um, and so that's exactly what Amber does. Another yeah, Golden Needle is a Chinese herb website. They carry some different brands and they gave us, they'll give us a practitioner's discount super easy. 
Oh, nice. So that's a place. Yeah. So it's like I submitted the this, this stuff in the next day. There was no questions asked. So uh -huh. it might be a Perfect. good place to get it cheaper. Is that a place? I put it in the comments. Is that in Portland? It, um, I don't know. I just went online. So oh, it's online. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I use New Herbs because their their facility, warehouse facility, is in Oakland, which is just three hours away from me. They're super cheap. They have, like, on um, New Herbs, they actually do lab testing on all their herbal products. They have organic, and they can literally ship it to me overnight. Like, because it's three hours away, I order it on Tuesday. It is at my door on Wednesday, and I spent, like, $4 on shipping. It's ridiculously. So that's, that's why I use New Herbs. Um, but there's lots of other great herbal companies out there to order your Chinese medicines from. Um, and you said Golden Needle, is that the name of it? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, and you just go on. I can't remember if it, it already had a spot or um, if I had to email them, but you just send in your certificates and then they sent the approval right away. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, it's. Time to set up your wholesale accounts with your herbal suppliers if you're not doing that yet. And I'm almost done rolling my honey pills here. And then I gotta wash my hands so that we can finish with the rest of the lesson for the day. Um, yeah, so the honey paste, um, either one of these is shelf stable forever. But both the paste and the pills shelf stable forever. I do recommend if you get all your pills the same size consistency and you have a scale, weigh one of them. So you know what, how many grams, what is the dose that I'm giving. Um, it's kind of helpful, I think, for determining does it work? Do I need to up the dose? Um, kind of just keeping track of what your dosage is. So I, I do have a scale right here. I'm gonna pop mine on it. I'll take a powder coated one and one pill is so light, it's like one gram. It's not even showing up on my scale. I'll put two on there. Yeah, I got two two pills equals one gram, so I'm making mine smaller, and it's a lighter formula this time. Okay, there's my last one. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, that was fun and messy and sticky. I hope all of you have a very nice batch of little rabbit turds that are delicious. You could tell your kids they're rabbit turds, then they won't eat them. <laughs>